Respiratory Distress Syndrome, or RDS, is the topic. And this basically is a consequence of being born premature. So you're looking at a gestational age probably of 37 weeks or less. And what we're really talking about is fetal lung immaturity. This can lead to respiratory distress. Now, the reason is because you have a deficiency in a very important molecule or substance known as surfactant. So that is the key points about RDS. Now, what's actually happening in RDS? What's the pathophysiology? Essentially, you have this surfactant, and it's a mix of lipids and proteins, and it's secreted. It's secreted by type 2 pneumocytes, lung cells. And this surfactant helps the alveoli function properly. Now, what are the alveoli? Alveoli essentially are the very ends of the respiratory tree. And these alveoli are responsible or gas exchange, and gas exchange in particular with the blood. When you have surfactant deficiency, these alveoli can't do their job properly. When you do have this surfactant deficiency because of the baby being born premature, the lungs actually can develop atelectasis. And what that means is that the alveoli can collapse or close, and that results in reduced or even absent gas exchange. So these are all very important points to keep in mind. When the lung can't uh, properly exchange gas with the blood, the infant becomes hypoxemic. And this results in all the symptomatology. So the first thing that happens is rapid breathing, increased respiratory rate. The next thing is that the, the baby within one hour of being born will develop this grunting type of labored respirations. In addition, there will be visible retractions in the sternal area, and then the nostrils will also be flaring, flaring of uh, nasal palate. And then the breath sounds will also be decreased. So it's a pretty, pretty characteristic uh, symptomatology. In terms of diagnosis, of course, clinical combined with the fact that the baby was born premature, but there are some tests that are very useful, the ABG and the chest x-ray. The ABG will show hypoxemia, which essentially is decreased O2, and will also show hypercapnia, which is increased CO2. Chest x-ray will show your atelectasis, all the characteristic appearances of that. Now, before we get into treatment, one thing that's important is how do you screen for this? If you feel that this may happen, you want to screen for this prenatally so you're ready for this if it indeed happens. And you do that by assessing the maturity of the fetal lungs. And there's a very specific test that you do. First, what you do is you do an amniocentesis and you remove the amniotic fluid and you measure two things lethicin and sphingomyelin and then you take a ratio and the ratio should be greater than two not equal to two greater than two very important so let's say the baby is born and has RDS how do you treat it well obviously surfactant but it isn't given you know as a medication it's given intrathecally sorry intratracheally and you actually have to first in intubate the patient or the, the neonate. And then also supplemental oxygen, oxygen is very important. Now, one final point before I get to the clinical vignettes is prevention. Prevention is that if you have a pregnancy that's between 24 and 34 weeks and um, impending delivery, what you do is you give the mother a steroid known as beta-methasone. And this will induce fetal 
surfactant production. So this is a very great, very good way of uh, helping the fetal lungs mature even before the infant is born. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. While in the hospital discharging a patient, you're notified that another one of your patients, a 32-year-old woman who has a 28 weeks gestation, is in labor on the delivery floor. By the time you arrive, the baby has already been delivered by cesarean and transferred to the neonatal ICU. APGAR scores were 7 at 1 minute and 8 at 5 minutes. After evaluating the mother, you go to the neonatal ICU to see the baby. When you arrive, the notice, you notice that the baby has nasal flaring, subcostal and intercostal retractions, cyanosis, and tachypnea. Most appropriate next step is, well, 28 weeks gestation is very premature, so it's, it's very suspicious combined with these physical exam findings that this is RDS. So you should definitely immediately do an ABG and a chest x-ray as part of the diagnosis. In preparation for delivery, an amniocentesis is performed. Which of the following parameters is most useful in predicting lung maturity? So remember, we were talking about this lethicin to sphingomyelin ratio, and it should be greater than two. So of the choices, the one that the only one that's greater than two is choice C. Next question. 25-year-old woman who is G2P1 experiences frequent contractions accompanied by cervical effacement at 26 weeks pregnancy. Cervix is not dilated. You have many concerns, including lack of pulmonary development. Which of the following measures might hasten lung development? Hasten or accelerate? Well, giving the mother a steroid between 24 and 34 weeks helps induce fetal surfactant production, and that steroid is betamethasone. A decision is made to deliver the infant. A neonatologist is called to attend the delivery secondary to the prematurity of the infant. Caesarean is performed, and infant is successfully delivered. However, the infant is in severe respiratory distress and immediately placed on 100% oxygen. ABG is obtained with a pH of 7.2, PO2 of 50, PCO2 of 65. Next, uh, most appropriate next step in management is, well, this baby definitely needs to be given surfactant, but you do that by first intubating the patient and giving the surfactant intratracheally. So you have to do both. So intubate and give surfactant. So choice D is the correct answer.